Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. All right, so now we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to start working our way this way across the guitar. Instead of working vertically, we're going to start thinking horizontally this way. And this is something I love to do uh, when I play. So again, I'm going to be playing in the key of G major or E minor. I want you to be able to use all this stuff over the backing track that I'm giving you. Okay, and just practice these things. So now what we're going to be doing is, uh, again, I have to know my guitar to a certain degree. And if you don't, you can certainly... Uh, learn the things I'm showing you, but the more you learn about your fretboard, you can play these on different strings and, you know, play them in different positions and different things like that. So what I'm doing is I'm starting off down here, I'm playing three, five, and seven. So it's that same group of six. It just looks a little bit different because I'm in a different spot, but I'm still in G major. So learning how to play that group of six is absolutely crucial to all of these ideas, these first ideas that we're doing right now, okay? So, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move up to the, uh, I played three, five, seven. Now I'm gonna move up to the eighth fret and I'm gonna play it backwards going eight, seven, five. So I had three, five, seven, and then eight, seven, five. Now that idea I used to practice a lot when I was younger and I always called it a square or a box. I would just go up. And what I would focus on is this note and that note, which is a down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You see, so over and over and over. Trying to find that down over and over and over when I play. Now, as I keep going, it's the same premise, but it's just going through all the various positions or notes of G major slash uh, E minor, however you want to look at that. Okay, so as I'm playing, I've got three, five, seven, and then I move up, I've got eight, seven, five, move up, I've got seven, eight, ten. Move up, I've got 12, 10, 8. Move up again, I'm on 10. And this is where the uh, shape gets screwy. So I'm going to play 10, 12, 13. 10, 12, 14. So it, the fingering is different, but it's still matching. I mean, the notes I'm playing here would be A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, which are all notes in the key of G. But it just feels weird because your fingers aren't symmetrical. All the way up to there, they were all symmetrical. You played these and then these, and then these, and then these. But now, you gotta play this. So 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 14. Which means the next one, when we move up to 15, and we go toward the ceiling, it's gonna be asymmetrical as well. It's gonna be 15, 14, 12, 15, 13, 12. So I have. Okay, then what I'm going to do is move up again, and it's going to be asymmetrical again. It's going to be 13, 15, 17, 14, 15, 17. Okay, so now when I move up again, it's going to be 19, 17, 15, which is going to be the three that I initially started with. And then what I did was I just, I got to end this somehow, so I went back up. I'm on 17 now, playing 17, 19, 20. I just bent that up in sort of an Engve Malmsteenish fashion and then went back to the 19 here. See like that. If you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, go to guitarzoom.com and consider becoming a premium member. There are 3 memberships to choose from. VIP, which gives you instant access to a library of short but powerful courses as well as new bite-sized lessons each month. There's also Play Songs that gives you step-by-step -step lessons so you can learn to play your favorite songs fast. 
And finally, there's Masterclass, university-level training on everything from soloing to music theory, from blues to home recording. For more info about these memberships and all the premium courses available to you, go to guitarzoom.com. Now back to the podcast. So if I play it nice and slow, it looks like this. Now, the one thing I do want to point out to you is that as you're playing this, there's a logical fingering that, for the most part, happens when you're playing groups of six, okay? If you're playing like five, seven, eight, normally I would use these three fingers. Now, you might be anti-pinky and have to do it a different way, and if you do, that's okay. Okay, you got to find what works for you, but for me, I'm just using logistics here. If I'm playing five, seven, eight, it would be these three fingers. If I was playing five, six, eight, it would be these three fingers. If I was playing five, seven, nine, it would still be these three fingers, okay? Because for me, I have a bigger stretch between my first and uh, middle finger for the five, seven, and then the seven, nine here, as opposed to trying to do this and do five, seven, nine. That's tough for me. Now, I can do it, but it's it's harder for me to do that. It's easier for me to use my, my uh, middle finger. So when we play what's called spread fingerings, okay? Three, five, seven, five, seven, nine, seven, nine, eleven, that sort of thing. Okay. You're gonna have to decide whether you want to use one, two, four, or one, three, four. And again, I suppose you could use one, two, three if you can stretch that far. That would be really tough for me. So I try and get people to understand that your pinky is actually incredibly important to your guitar playing future, right? But if you're one of those players that just absolutely denies using your pinky, then you're gonna have to find a way that works. So as you watch me play this, you're going to see that's exactly what I'm using is that logic. Here I'm using these three fingers. Here I'm using these three fingers. On the next one I'm using these three fingers, right? Which makes sense. Next one would be a spread fingering, so I'm on one, two, four. The next one is where I run into a problem. So I have to use one, two, three, because on the next string I got to use one, two, four. You see? So I have to share the logic there. When I move up to the next one, Again, I got to share that logic. So when I'm going backwards, I got 15, 14, 12, and 15, 13, 12. So I'm using, if I can get that guy out of the way for you, those three fingers. So I'm going from here to here. Next one, again, I got to use an illogic because it's an irregular shape. So I'm going my normal spread fingering to a one, two, four. But I got to move that first finger up to be able to accommodate that. And then once I get here, I'm back on track, but this is where I want to show you my limitation. As I get into those thinner uh, frets, those tinier frets, I tend to shift to a one, two, three, where I logically should be playing a one, three, four, because it just gets too tiny for me. So for me, when I get up to the 17, 19, 20, what I want you to notice, I'm using these three fingers. I'm not using these three. And it's, for me, it's just, it's just more comfortable for me to go here because by the time I get to those frets, they're so small that it just feels more comfortable for me to, to move into those, okay? Now, I'm not saying that that's what you want you want to do. You might have made that shift prior to getting to the 17th fret. You might not make that shift at all. You might stay consistent all the way through, and all of those are okay. My point is I want you to be aware of it, though. So as you're playing, you're aware of what's happening. It's not just frets and picking. But it's fingering. Like, what fingers are you using and why? And is that working for you? And is there anything that you need to be thinking about? Because the more you expose any points that could be issue for you, the better you're going to get at this whole thing, right? It doesn't alleviate the practice and the metronome and the over and over and over repetitiveness of this. Of course, you got to do that stuff, right? But it, it certainly from an intuitive standpoint, it starts teaching you more about you and the way that you play and the pluses that you've got and then the minuses that you've got, you know, what, what things are hindering your playing and what can you do about it? Or is there anything you can do about it? Right? Because the more we understand about ourselves, the more we can start dealing with what kind of player we're going to become, whether we like it or not. Do we want to go this direction? And if so, what do we need to uh, get better at? Or do we realize who we are and start taking this direction, whatever this is, because that's that's more realistic to who we are as a player, 
These are the choices we make all the time. So think about those as you're learning these, these licks or patterns as well. Next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. Hey, Steve here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, what we're going to be doing is looking at some creative idea, ideas of breaking out of always playing in four or always playing in three or something like that, although three can be really interesting. We're going to look at some patterns of five and seven. Or we're going to be looking at some solo patterns, but we're also going to be looking at some chordal patterns. Um, and maybe this will help you a little bit with your creativity in your songwriting or just in your soloing in general. Um, so let's go ahead and just start off by looking at some groups of five. We're going to look at three different examples, two different soloing patterned ideas and um, a chordal idea. So the first one we're going to be looking at here, what we're going to do is we're going to go up and play 20, 19, and 17 on the first string and then 19 and 17 on the second string. So we have... Now this could be anywhere, okay? The idea is I've got three notes on one string, two notes on the next string, which equals, of course, five notes. So you could create anything you want with this. Hey, Steve Stein here from GuitarZoom.com, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, can I ask you a favor? Please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. Your feedback means more to me than you'll ever know. And be sure to check out my YouTube channels where you'll find over 1,000 videos to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for listening. Stay positive, keep playing, and keep having fun. If you'd like some help with your guitar playing but you're not sure how to get started, go to GuitarZoom.com and look for the Help Me Choose survey. By answering a few simple questions, you'll get Steve's personal recommendation of the perfect course for you. All this and more is available for you at GuitarZoom.com.